what's what's hard to to easily identify from uh, for for mass consumption through you know um, Costco and chain book selling and that sort of thing is your kind of book is the PI novel is the more traditional that you can't easily put a label on a cover on it that says okay it's going to be cute or okay you know this is about the end of the world as we know it unless right. we can stop the bomb right. you know at 11:59 when it's set to go off in midnight. So I said, what you're really, you're not really looking at a lapse of form as a marketing dilemma, right. which uh, is making those kinds of books kind of invisible, but the readership for them hasn't gone away. And in fact, presses, says I, like mine, exist to do those kinds of books in the gap. Because if you're shooting for an audience of five to 10,000 readers, you don't have to worry about the kinds of marketing situations that people trying to sell books to 50 to 500,000 readers mm -hmm. have to do. Right. It's a whole different dynamic. If I, if I may say so too, I believe there's also a kind of sexism involved here in that. Do you? Um, yes, because uh, although it's sexism against men, um, that I, I feel that, um, that women, it, it, it's thought at least that women read and that women read a wider range of books uh, and they read deeper and more intelligent books. And what men like are these kind of big, stupid, you know, uh, uh, thrillers that don't have a lot of character and don't have a lot of issues in them. Um, the idea, I mean, think about this for a minute, the idea that an action story, that a story of pure action, gunfights, you know, killing, and, and so forth, can, be, can also be an intelligent work of literature is antithetical to the critical, uh, to the central critical notion. Um, a work of literature, as American critics perceive it, is a book about people in a room, in a house, doing things that ordinary people do. It's very, you know, might have one shattering, as the back of the book will say, one shattering act of violence that brings out the truth of people's lives. But it's not a, a, a fast-moving action story. A work of literature can't be a fast-moving action story full of, uh, you know, confrontations and fights and things like that, which is what a lot of men like to read. And so what you're doing is you're denying the male imagination to some degree. And by the way, I don't think that just men like to read those things any more than just women like to read the books of Jane Austen. I mean, I love Jane Austen. Uh, and, and I think that, uh, and I've been really gratified that women seem to react to, to Dynamite Road really well, you know. We like to hear from each other, but we like to hear honestly from e to each other. And I think that the uh, denigrating of, uh, of action and adventure and violence in fiction uh, in favor of quiet reality um, is essentially a denigration of the male imagination, which does tend to go for big, epic uh, stories of adventure and excitement and rescuing women from danger. See, that's my natural me. I mean, oh, yeah, my yeah. book story is very interesting because we have always been gender neutral. Yeah. We actually have more men customers than women. Right. Uh, I have always found that your kind of book, you know, Lee's book, Dennis, whenever, they have more female readers and lots of men read the books that, you know, are thought to be cuter, whatever it is, um, I think that these are just kind of mythos and that I, I agree. in actuality, um, I don't think that, that it's true. But I think that one of the dangers of, of having an industry that is so concentrated in one area, whether it's London or New York or whatever <laughs> yeah. it is, is that the people who work in it talk to each other no, and, and have a hard time talking to other people. I think that Today, electronic, you know, computer technology, electronics, whatever, are making it gradually possible for agents not to have to live in New York for a diffusion, which eventually may make the whole marketplace more reflective mm -hmm. of, of how things are. But the problem is the big money, the real power, the distribution, you know, um, system and all is still concentrated in that one area. So they're still looking to a relatively small segment of the country for answers. Yeah. Um, I think that one of the most interesting publishing companies, one of the most lucrative publishing companies, believe it or not, is Harlequin, mm -hmm. which is located in Toronto. Yep. And uh, while they're publishing romance, and a lot of it is just it's pure escape, I mean, yeah. junk romance, if you want to call it that, um, they're nevertheless really 
fairly much in tune with what their segment of the marketplace wants to read. And it's a huge segment of the marketplace. It is. Plus, they're over. I mean, they can be a lot more pragmatic because right. they're, you know, there's a lot. And I, I think one advantage that Poison Pen Press has is that it's in Scottsdale. And uh -huh. You know, we don't well, buy no, into any of this. You there's know, there's just no question that what you're saying is true. It is just no question that the. Uh, the provincialism uh, of New York, and I love New York. I lived in this New York for many New York. years. It's it's London too, and um, London and LA, and LA. You know, yeah. I mean, it is places where uh, that are not thinking uh, with the rest of the country, and they're not thinking. Uh, you know, it, <laughs> the thing is, I suppose that if the people in New York were dealing with all of the people in the metro area. Uh, it would be a little different, but they're really dealing with people between 53rd Street and 12th, you know? <laughs> That's right. a very small area. And there's forest keeping system. Yeah. You always face it. Every single business, hobby, game, whatever it might be, has a scorekeeping system. Yes. You know, I mean, one of the yeah. reasons I was addicted to bridge for years, which I gave up when I yeah. opened the poison pan because I figured I couldn't handle <laughs> I couldn't both, both, was that, you know, if you know about game theory, one of the reasons people love it is that it has an easily understood score system, right. scoring system, so you can see how you're doing. And with games, as soon as one ends, another begins. So you always, even if you're a loser in the game you're in, you're potentially uh -huh. a winner in the very next one. Well, that translates pretty well to publishing if you really stop and think about it. Even if this book's not working, we know that the best seller that will, is right around the corner. Right. And you have a fairly finite scorekeeping system now. You've got bestseller lists. You've got you know um, the money, yeah. how the money tree you know is mm -hmm. working. Um, and one of the ways that you define display status and all things like advertising in the New York Times. I have said to them repeatedly, nobody in Scottsdale buys books because they're advertised right. in the New York Times. Yeah. Why don't you spend some of your money on the Arizona Republic or Tribune newspapers yeah. or um, you know some of the other um, you know local stuff? But no, and so great newspapers all over the country are folding up their book sections because there isn't any. There are now seven pull-out book sections in the country. Right. Yeah, I mean, you amazing. know, the Chronicle's gone down, the LA Times has changed, you know, yeah. and it's because there isn't enough, you know, support yeah. uh, in terms of, uh, because they don't, their scorekeeping is pretty much directed to to New York and, and the Times is the big record in New York. It is. It's, and the Times has an enormous amount of power. Uh, um, and, um, and I think it's, it's a pity. Uh, I'm, I'm not even sure the Times, the best people in the Times, want that kind of power. Um, it just devolves upon them. Um, because it shouldn't be up to one or two critics um, you know, to say what's what. And, and really, when you watch so much of the cultural world, um, it is playing to those power centers. Um, it drives me because because my stuff is politically incorrect. Um, it makes me a little crazy because I always hear these guys on uh, pontificating that art should shock. Art should shock, but they don't mean it should shock them. They mean it should shock somebody outside of the metro area whom they're never going to have to pay any attention to. Really, uh, it's all right to take a religious symbol and destroy it because they know nobody on the New York Times is going to nail them for that. But point out that maybe uh, political correctness is a mistake or that uh, feminism has gone off the rails. The New York Times will just tear you apart, or worse, ignore you. And uh, and those are the risks that people don't take. And um, and so what happens? We become this culture that really it struts around as if it's full of rebels, but it's really full of adolescents uh, rebelling against parents who aren't even there anymore, who don't even have any power to do anything against them. Um, and I think it's it's a, a silly system that it, that creates silly works of art and, and enormous praise for things that disappear like that. Um, and and again and again and again, uh, small uh, works, small presses, small films. Um, films that say something different and that are turned away from at the start keep rising to the top because they talk to people and they address they the do. secret but heart. But the key you know? is distribution, and if you can't get that's, it, it's the key it. to the movie industry, it's the key to, the, key to the book business. Yeah. You spoke all that like a real former reporter, which I know you are. <laughs> you know, I was going to sort of lightly go back through your life. I know that you lived for a period of time in London. You certainly mm -hmm. lived for a period of time in New York. Yes. Now you live somewhere In Santa Barbara, California. That's it. I thought you'd gone west, young man, yes, however that worked out. Yep. Um, and your writing history, um, I had a terrible time trying to put your bibliography together today. <laughs> when, I, when I was in business early on in 1989 in the 90s, I had some very good books by Keith Peterson, yes. which to my great surprise yes. turned out to be you. To be me, yes. 